Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on Indigenous Peoples Day for Volunteer Canada's webinar, The Volunteering Lens of Equity, Diversity and Inclusion. My name is Deborah Pike, Manager of Special Projects at Volunteer Canada. A few administrative notes before we start and as people are signing on. This webinar is being recorded and the link to the recording without the Q&A portion will be sent to all participants and registrants after the webinar. Please note closed captioning is available and enabled for the webinar. If you do not see it automatically along the bottom of your screen as people are speaking now, then click on the live transcript button at the bottom of your screen or wherever the features bar appears on your device to give you the viewing options. Select uh, view caption to view the captions along the bottom of your screen. Okay. There will be a time for questions following the presentation, but please use the chat and Q&A functions during the webinar as well. We hope you will join the conversation in this way. To start us off, please say hello in the chat now and let us know the name of your organization and where you're located today. For those of you who may not know us, Volunteer Canada provides national leadership and expertise on volunteering to enhance the participation, quality, and diversity of volunteer experiences to build strong and connected communities. We don't do this work alone. We work with more than 200 volunteer centers, with businesses, educational institutions, government departments, and volunteers. Volunteer Canada's ultimate goal is to enhance the participation, quality, and diversity of volunteering. Our expertise is in volunteering engagement, and we are only at the beginning of our own journey to better understand diversity and its relationship to volunteering within our current context. We are beginning with exploring the role volunteering plays in building inclusive, diverse, and equitable communities. One of the ways we're doing this is through the project we will hear about today. With that, I would like to introduce you to Mary Catherine Williams, Executive Director of Volunteer Campbell River in BC, who will lead today's webinar. Mary Catherine is a lifelong volunteer, the Executive Director of a Volunteer Centre, and a settler of Irish, English, and German grandparents, the parent of a child with a disability, the wife of an Indigenous man, and someone who is passionate about the journey of understanding that Canadians find ourselves on especially at this time. Mary Catherine was involved with Volunteer Canada's Inclusive Communities Project during the research and development period and worked with the Project Advisory Group to develop the resources we introduced today. Mary Catherine. Thank you so much, Deb, and hello, everyone. It's so nice to be with you today. I'm going to start our morning, and for me, morning and for you, afternoon, um, with our land acknowledgement. I respectfully acknowledge that I am a guest and so thankful to live, work, play, and volunteer in the unceded traditional territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil nations, which is also known as Vancouver. I'm very thankful to the stewards of this land, including the ancestors who've taken such care of all that is here since time immemorial and from whom we can learn so much about living in a good way. I give this acknowledgement as I commit to continue my journey of understanding the consequences of colonization and racism that have so negatively impacted our Indigenous neighbours, friends, and in my case, family. I'm continually working on my response with an open heart and mind to the history of racism and colonization that has impacted Indigenous people in the past and continues to have ripple effects today for all Canadians. Colonialism, oppression, and white supremacy, systemic racism have caused harm to many people in Canada and around the world. I would like to also share the wise words of Paula Spivak, who is the President and CEO of Volunteer Canada. May we support and accompany each other on our individual and shared journeys towards a society built on justice, respect, equity, and harmony, so that we may all thrive and prosper as diverse and connected communities and nations. I think those are great words to get us started today. So I invite you to take a moment to acknowledge and think about the territory where you are and consider your part in our journey of reconciliation. Because as Deb said, today is National Indigenous Peoples Day when we especially celebrate the heritage, diverse cultures and outstanding achievements of First Nations, Inuit and Métis peoples. 
I believe that every day we must make time to acknowledge and appreciate the original peoples of Turtle Island and all of their contributions to our communities in the past, the present, and the future. I also want to acknowledge the additional pain that the recent news about the unmarked graves at the site of the Kamloops Indian Residential School, and more recently other sites across this land, has brought to so many people, especially those who attended residential school, family members, or intergenerational survivors, and anyone who is impacted by the continued ripple of residential schools and systemic racism. We do understand that for many Canadians, this is new information about the tragedies that have come from the residential school policy. At the same time, many, especially Indigenous people, have always known about the missing children and those who did not come home. This is an important time for each of us to reflect, grieve, learn, and decide how we can act going forward to respond to this tragedy now and in the future. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what we're going to do today. This is our agenda for the day. We are going to induce the introduce the Inclusive Communities Project that Deb spoke about in her introduction. We're going to talk a little bit about the concepts of diversity, equity, inclusion that we used in the project. And we're also going to explore the role of volunteering in developing diverse, equity, and inclusive communities. And I think that is the nut of this entire project, is that we have a great opportunity in our volunteer and nonprofit organizations to really build an inclusive community through the lens of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So you might wonder, why are we talking about this? What are the, why is there a need to talk about this? Um, as, you may, as most of you know, our demographics are shifting in Canada, and Deloitte did a, a study in 2017 that has really given us some great information to help us understand some of those changes. For example, by the year 2025, nearly three quarters of the workforce will be millennial. Slightly more women than men will be in the workforce. One in four workers will be over 55. 30% may have a mother tongue that is neither French nor English. One in four people in the workforce will have been born in another country. Less of our population will be working. One in three people in the workforce will be a visible minority. And 80% of new jobs will require a skilled worker and there will be a shortfall of skilled workers. And some Indigenous stats, and this is from the StatsCan 2016 census. There were in, there, in 2016, there were at least 1.7 million Indigenous people which represents about 4.9% of the population. And this increased from 2006, so for 10 years, um, by 42.5%. By this is more than four times the growth rate of non-Indigenous population over the same period. According to projections, the number of Indigenous people will continue to grow quickly. And in the next two decades, the Indigenous population is likely to exceed 2.5 million people. And we also know that our Indigenous um, population, our Indigenous friends and neighbors, are, are increasingly active in our, in our world, in our workforce, in our educational institutions, and they are part of what is happening in Canada. Part of um, our interest in this project and why we want to acknowledge, um, why we want to build knowledge and education about diversity, equity, and inclusion is that we recognize that many nonprofit roles and volunteer roles, nonprofit organizations and volunteer roles have been developed to support individuals and groups with diverse backgrounds, and many of these have equity and inclusion struggles. So by having a better understanding of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and these issues, we can better support individuals we serve, and our programs can achieve the desired outcomes. In addition, many volunteer programs welcome individuals with diverse backgrounds and experiences, including newcomers, people with disabilities, seniors, youth, the contributions and connections we can build can be more positive when we have made an effort to learn about and learn from each other's experiences. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the, the project itself. Um, so next slide, Deb. Um, just wait for the slide to move on. Oh, it's the poll, I forgot. This is the live version. <laughs> So we are, we do have a poll and we invite you to, uh, to answer the following questions. The first one is, where do you find yourself personally on the journey of understanding diversity, equity, inclusion? And the second is, where is your organization on its journey of understanding these issues? Yeah, I can see people filling things out and we'll end the poll in a couple minutes. Couple seconds probably. Deb will end the poll in a 
Only she sees that most people have responded. You're doing great. Almost 90% of you have voted. Wonderful. So here are the results of this first poll. Uh, so many of you have taken some first steps and are continuing to learn. Some of you are at the beginning of your journey, and some of you are more confident in your understanding of these issues. So it's great to have that variety of people here today. Where is your organization? So similar response. Many, many organizations um, are beginning to develop a plan of action. Uh, some are at the very beginning of their journey, and some have a plan in place. Wonderful. So I'm going to... Great. So um, this is a description of the actual project, uh, Volunteering Lens of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, the, the objectives of the project. Um, so in early 2020, Volunteer Canada, in collaboration with Canada Life, embarked upon an exploration of the role of volunteering plays in building inclusive, diverse, and equity, equitable communities. The purpose of this project is to leverage knowledge about the benefits of volunteering to build strong and inclusive communities. As Deb said, Volunteer Canada is exploring the role volunteering plays in building diverse, inclusive, and equitable communities. And you know, we, we considered the issues in our, in our sector. Um, there has been a long-standing um, concern about the lack of diversity among employees, volunteers, and those serving on boards. Um, we know this is changing, but we know there is still work to do. A recent uh, research by Stats Canada confirmed that the composition of most uh, charitable societies does not reflect the diversity of Canada as a society. And so we wondered, why is this the case and what can we do about it? Some of our questions also included, how does volunteering help newcomers integrate to integrate into their communities? How do newcomer volunteers help organizations increase their comp cultural competence to serve the community? How can we make volunteering more accessible for diverse populations, including newcomers and baby boomers and youth, people with disabilities, Indigenous people, um, LGBTQ2 plus individuals? How do we engage volunteers from diverse populations to help make communities more inclusive? So those were questions that really led the, um, the development of this project. And as you can see, we wanted to better understand the benefits of volunteering, both for the individual volunteer, for organizations, and for communities businesses, educational institutions. We wanted to access knowledge. We knew there was a lot of great knowledge out there. And so how does that knowledge relate to volunteering? And we wanted to better understand, in, better equip individuals, organizations, and the community um, to be stronger and more inclusive through volunteer engagement. So at the early, uh, Sorry, got to get this. Um, early in the project, Volunteer Canada established a project advisory group to guide the research and resource development for this project. And this project, this advisory group, and you can see the list of, of um, people involved, uh, includes individuals from national nonprofit organizations, from volunteer centers, from educational institutions, and businesses that have a shared in, in, a shared interest and a commitment to building diverse communities and inclusive communities through their volunteering. This group was co-chaired by Volunteer Canada and Canada Life, and we are very, very thankful to the advisory group members and Canada Life for your contributions. We had um, monthly meetings for many, many months, and we discussed lots of important topics, and they really, the advisory committee really helped guide the decisions about what this project would look like, what the information would be, and we really appreciate everyone's contributions. So the project activities. There were three main activities. Um, there was a, a research scan um, that looked at the benefits of volunteering to individuals, organizations, educational institutions, workplaces, and communities. So really looking at the landscape of research. We created an online repository of these research tools. And then we developed tools and resources to leverage knowledge to help people learn more about diversity, equity, and inclusion in the context of volunteering and building inclusive communities. So we're going to explore some of these today. Um, before we go on to do that, though, we just wanted to talk a little bit about um, def definitions. So at the very beginning of the project, the Inclusive Communities Project Advisory Group developed definitions of the concepts of diversity, equity, and inclusion to help create a framework for common understanding for the work as we worked through the project. 
On the screen, you see the shortened versions of each definition, but I will let you know that the, the uh, longer versions or the complete versions are on the um, Volunteer Canada website. And I'm going to read to you each one. They are long, but I think it's important to see how we really wanted to cover um, all of the information that was important. So the definition for diversity is related to the recognition of the range of human differences, individual identity, and the complex characteristics that form one's identity, including but not limited to race, ethnicity, national origin, language, age, gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, social class, education status, marital status, mental and physical ability and attributes, religious or ethical value systems, political beliefs. And we also acknowledge that identity is multifactorial, fluid, and contextual. So very complicated definition, but we wanted to make sure that we covered this. The definition for equity is based on the understanding that historic and societal factors have created many forms of inequity, which prevent equal access and experience to opportunities and resources for members of, of, this is of society based on their identity. Equity is the understanding that we must make efforts in all areas to ensure fair treatment of individuals and equal access to opportunities and resources. We must identify and reduce barriers that prevent equal access. And the third and final definition, inclusion, is the authentic, intentional, ongoing effort to ensure that diverse individuals and those who have been excluded are able to fully participate in all aspects of our organizational work, including decision-making and access to all experiences, opportunities, activities, and resources. So I think, you know, for me, that the value of this, um, those definitions, and particularly the last one, is we can do a lot of work on diversity and equity, but if we don't ensure that our organizations are inclusive, um, we've, we've missed the mark. We need to make sure that the people that we are working with and that we are inviting into our organizations um, are feeling that they belong and that this is a place for them, and that's the inclusion piece. We also want to acknowledge that this project is happening during an incredible time of awakening in our collective experiences understanding of the impact of racism, historical and, cur and current. So the landscape, the landscape will continue to change, including our knowledge, our definitions, and understanding what actions we need to take. This is a, a, a fluid um, topic, and we, we really want to acknowledge that things will change over time. Um, one of the things I think helped me understand uh, some of the, the material and, and the information here is, is an Indigenous worldview that teaches us that there are many perspectives of the same experience, and all of these perspectives can be true, and so it is with this topic. Depending on who we are, what privilege we hold, or what barriers we face, our understanding of the topics that we explore will be reflective of our experiences. In some ways, it's the act of opening our understanding to the perspective of others that is the cornerstone of the work we are doing. So Volunteer Canada um, has created a, web, a page on the website, and it's in the very first uh, drop-down box um, on the website. And you can find a link to the outcomes for this work, the resources, the legislation, and the learning modules, as well as those definitions. Um, the resources uh, is a searchable repository of resources that are related to, to diversity, equity, and inclusion connected to volunteering. Um, the publications, articles, videos, and we will continue to build the repository and we invite you to recommend any resource that, that you feel should be there. And there is a, a, an opportunity to do that and I'll show you in a moment. Currently, there are hundreds of tools and resources and research reports in English and French that are in the repository. Um, there, sorry, there were many, many um, tools and resources that were identified, but after review of the initial list, the discussion with the advisory group led us to choose a, a, a limited scope of resources um, so that it was really related to volunteering and or the nonprofit sector. So the idea is if you want to learn about a particular area of um, diversity, so for example, um, understanding the uh, experience of people with physical or um, uh, physical disability, then there may be other places that you would research, but physical disability related to volunteering and nonprofit organizations um, would be available in this repository. The second um, component of the research was a, a social policy and legislation um, research tool, a research report. Um, so it looked at uh, social policy and legislation in Canada in Canadian provinces and territories that is related to diversity, inclusion, and equity. 
And the learning modules is the third component, the e-learning modules, and I will explore these in a little bit. Um, and they are available as of next week. The first module will be available and you will receive notifications. So we'll look a little bit more at the learning modules. The intention here is to guide users through their exploration of the topics of diversity, equity, inclusion in volunteering. And um, we're really excited to get those up and running for you. So here's the um, example of the repository. This is just a, a page that lets you um, see what the repository search bar looks like. Um, this little, uh, in, in the top red in the middle, is um, the recommended resource. So if you find something that you think should be in the repository, please let us know. And this, um, the bars on the left let you research various topics in both languages. You can choose your language. And um, I just did it this morning to kind of see how, how easy it is to use, and it's really quite remarkable. And I know that the resource Resources are very, very useful. So we encourage you to check that out. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the learning modules. So this is really exciting. Um, there, we uh, have created three learning modules based on the information that we gathered during the project and the information that we felt would be helpful in this context. Um, module one, so these modules are free of charge for everyone, but you do need to register through the Volunteer Canada website. And um, if you have any trouble registering, just contact Volunteer Canada. Deb Pike will help you or one of the other staff members. And at the completion of each module, um, the person completing would receive a certificate of completion. Um, so module one um, is about uh, learning the key concepts of diversity, equity, and inclusion and considering the benefits of fostering diversity, equity, inclusion related to volunteering in your organization and in your community. It also helps you do some personal reflection on diversity, equity, inclusion, and how you can move forward personally and professionally. Module, tool, module two looks at concepts to raise awareness about key elements and an approach to creating an inclusive organization. So it looks more at your organizational work. And module three considers and applies an equity and inclusion perspective to volunteer management process. So the volunteer cycle, not volunteer management cycle. cycle. So the learning objectives of module one, uh, to think about and discuss key concepts of diversity, equity, inclusion. And there's, again, it's, it's an opportunity to do some reflection and um, do some talking. Some people have, we've thought about these modules might be done in a group, uh, staff group, or they might be done individually. Either could work. Um, another benefit objective is, is to consider the benefits of fostering diversity, equity, and inclusion in relation to volunteering in your organization and community, and then reflect on your own personal journey. So for module two, learning about the elements needed to build a more inclusive environment in your organization. And we understand that this is a change process. So really beginning to move through the process of changing how we do things. And to really look at um, some of the leading practices and hopefully become inspired about how to make that change process. And in module three, um, applying the equity and inclusion lens uh, to volunteer management process, as I mentioned, we will talk about um, the grounds for discrimination so that volunteer managers are aware of how not to discriminate against individuals and what the grounds of discrimination are, and become aware of the effect of biases uh, during your management cycle. So I just want to give you a little picture of what the um, modules will look like, the e-learning modules. Um, as you can see, this is sort of page one of module one, the introduction. And you can see at the bottom are the, um, the buttons that move you through. Um, you can go back and forward and, um, and access each, each uh, part of the e-learning e -learning tool. Um, we've created the tool so that it is, it is accessible with reasonable internet in most communities, um, but it can also be downloaded and watched offline, and there is also a downloadable script available for people that would prefer to have it in another format. So we just want to kind of dig in a little bit. So this is part of Module 1, Chapter 2, and you can see that um, this, this part of the module has three topics, the benefits of volunteering, the benefits to organizations, and inclusive communities. So we'll just explore each one. Let's look at number one. So the benefits of volunteering for individuals, uh, this can create a sense of belonging and build connections. So if you think of someone who maybe comes from another place or has, um, has not participated in this community or this organization, um, the sense of belonging and building relationships and connections to others is a very, very important benefit. Opportunities to learn and develop and share skills. 
um, both ways. Opportunities for empowerment, giving people um, the opportunity to feel competent and capable and um, that they have an, a voice in our community. Improved physical and mental well-being. Those of us who are very familiar with the benefits of volunteering know that this is important and very much so. And also having the satisfaction of making contribution. And so if you think about all of this, it really is building a sense of belonging. So the second one, uh, a collective benefit from the uniqueness of the individual. So by including inclusive individuals in our organizations, we can better understand and respond to the needs of our community, which is also very diverse. Uh, we can have new and fresh ideas and approaches from people who have diverse backgrounds and think differently than we do. We can have a broader range of skills and abilities in our organizations and increase capacity. We can expand our pool of volunteers and staff, and this will also help, and create, help enhance our creativity and innovation in our programs. And I believe we will also have more confidence in working with programs that serve diverse users and those from diverse backgrounds. We need to have people in our organizations that will help us serve people that we serve. Expanded opportunities for programs and service deliveries and partnerships. So by being more inclusive, we can really develop a broader response in our communities. So as we move into the, um, the next phase, so we have the project uh, basically complete, completed, um, it's now it's time to act. Now we, we are inviting you to um, move into this work with us. Many of you have already started, as you mentioned. So this is, this is difficult work. This is ongoing. It's challenging. It's exciting. It's important. It's worthwhile. I know in my own work, I've had days where I felt overwhelmed, I felt worried, um, I felt like I might be making mistakes, I felt um, up against others who didn't agree with what I was doing, um, but I also felt the support of um, my colleagues who are in this journey with me and do really support the work that we're doing. So um, I encourage you to, to um, you know, really reflect on all of those possibilities as you move forward. Um, and I want to also remind you that this work happens at all levels. It happens personally, it happens in your organizations, and it also happens in your community. So this isn't just one job that um, is done in one area. It's certainly across those four. And it's important that you really begin to reflect on where you and your organization are on the journey of understanding and find your own pathway. Each person and each organization will have a different pathway through um, this work. And I really feel like, um, in my own experience, it's starting where you are and taking that one next step is the way to get going and the way to move forward because it can seem overwhelming. Uh, in our organization, we are just building our policies and practices to be more inclusive. And um, that's what we chose to do. We chose to take one thing next and work on that and then move forward um, as we could. The other thing to keep in mind is that this process has an uneven timeline. It doesn't, um, it doesn't move forward in a straight line at a, at a formal time frame that you are expecting. We have to be patient and we have to be um, willing to have some ups and downs, some moving backwards and moving forward. I think that's very important to think about. Um, I did see the question pop up, so we will answer questions in a few minutes. Um, so how can you take action? We all believe that starting in your own community to build authentic, respectful relationships is a very important place to start. So if you're wondering how can we um, increase our, uh, the option for individuals with disability to participate in our volunteering programs, you need to make relationships with people and organizations who live with disability and ask them to work with you on developing those practices. So really look around your community and, and figure out who it is that you can reach out to and make connections with. Um, it's, that's a very hard and scary thing to do, but it sure does have great, um, great impact on the work that we do. Um, and again, authentic and respectful relationships. This is a two-way street, and so really um, making sure that you're clear on your expectations and, and what the reason for your connection is. Um, developing a working group. So a lot of organizations have um, taken the step of creating a working group within their organization or even within the community to discuss and learn and plan next steps. This might be a board and staff group, or as I said, it might be a community um, talking circle to really talk about what you can do next. Uh, from there, your organization may develop policies and practices to promote diversity, equity, inclusion. For example, what are your hiring practices? 
and if you hire people with disability, or sorry, with, with um, diversity, how do you make sure that they feel safe and welcomed in your organization? Um, I was able to attend a webinar a few weeks ago that Deloitte put on, and they have done um, some very important work in terms of um, becoming more inclusive to Indigenous community. And they worked hard on that aspect. How does their organization both attract and hire Indigenous staff, but how do they make their organization a safe and um, uh, welcoming place for Indigenous staff as they come on board? So those are things that you might be thinking about. Um, in our organization, we just revised our volunteer handbook to use more inclusive language. Um, and we really looked at what is the language in our handbook, how can we make it less um, formal and more inclusive so that more people will feel that this speaks to them. Um, join with other organizations and groups who are doing similar work. This might be locally in your community or even in larger um, contexts like nationally, like with Volunteer Canada. So the next steps going forward, we encourage you to explore the database uh, of resources that I, that I introduced you to earlier. And as, you, as I said, you can find that on Volunteer Canada in the very left-hand drop-down box at the very bottom. And reminder, if you do know a resource that we should add to this database, please share it with us through the link on the page. Please explore the three e-learning modules uh, that we've discussed today. Uh, encourage your staff, your board members, and your organization volunteers to explore these modules too. They were meant for every level in your organization. And they will, as I said, the first module will be available starting next week, and you will get some information from Volunteer Canada about that. And then a third thing is to introduce and promote the e-learning modules to other organizations in your communities. And to that, we've come to the end of the formal slides. Uh, so uh, the, a webinar in French on this topic will be happening in July, L'Optique du Bénévolat sur la diversité, l'équité et l'inclusion. And that will be led by Fimba Tanquano, who is co-chair of the Project Advisory Group and a former direct, executive director of the Federation of Volunteer Centres of Quebec. After that, our webinar series is going to take a break for the summer months and start again in the fall. So we encourage you to check the Volunteer Canada website for more details on what we have coming up um, for the fall. And, you know, you're on the chat right now. We're looking to finalize that roster for the fall and into the winter of next year, hard to believe. But if you have a topic that you would like to have, um, as a webinar, please uh, put it into the chat or my contact information is on the screen there. Send me a quick email and let me know. We're happy to respond to the needs of organizations. That's the reason that we do these uh, learning, share these learning opportunities and how we develop the resources and tools that we provide. So please give us a shout and let us know if there's a topic of particular interest. I would like to thank Mary Catherine Williams for presenting today and sharing her insights and experiences on this important topic and thank all of you for joining us and doing the same, sharing your insights and experiences. This is how we learn and grow together. This was but the first conversation and we hope you will join us again uh, to continue these conversations as well as to continue or start these conversations in your organizations and in your communities as we learn from each other and build our shared understanding together. So again, thank you all for joining us.